Hello, mi gente, and welcome back to Nata Knows Best. So, in the world of Latin American beans, Puerto Ricans have habichuela guisadas. Now, these aren't your typical beans, because these beans are stewed. And they're stewed in sofrito, a little bit of cumin, some oregano, and then all of that in a tomato-based sauce. If you haven't had these beans, these are going to be your new favorites. So, let's get into it. So these may be the easiest beans you've ever made. So I'm going to quickly go over the ingredients. For Puerto Ricans, when we say habichuelas, we're referring to red beans, pink beans, maybe red kidney beans. So those are going to be the star ingredient along with the tomato sauce that I mentioned and then some sofrito. Now, I'll be the first to admit this. Growing up, I was in love with habichuelas. When it came time to the like big duel of habichuelas versus um, gandules. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my arroz con gandules recipe. I'll link it right here for you guys. Anyway, in that battle between pigeon peas and red beans, I was always choosing red beans. Up until recently, when I really started to develop my flavors more, that's when I started to enjoy gandules. But for all of my life, for the most part, I was a die-hard habichuelas girl. So if you guys are Puerto Rican, let me know in the comments, are you team habichuela or are you team gandules? So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is peel one potato. Now, if you're thinking, um, why are you peeling a potato when you said we're making habichuelas? And <laughs> Puerto Rican habichuelas are not your average. We always like elevated flavors. So inside of these red beans, we're also going to have a little bit of potato. We're going to have a little bit of pork, maybe some ham, because we're all about bold flavors. And this is definitely not going to lack any flavor. So now that we've peeled our potato, we're going to slice our potato into cubes so it can cook evenly while it's inside of our stewed beans. So the first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of olive oil to our pot. And then we're going to add our homemade sofrito. Now I've linked my sofrito recipe multiple times. I'll do it once again in the comments below. So remember to check that out. This is sofrito that I always make in advance and then just have it in the freezer for whenever I'm making a dish that requires it. So while our sofrito is becoming a little aromatic, I'm going to add our cubed ham or cubed pork, whichever you prefer. And while it's in there, it's just going to render out some of that fat from the ham and it's going to combine with the sofrito, which it's just going to be so amazing. Next, I'm going to add some of our tomato sauce. I am cheating by using canned tomato sauce, but I said these were going to be simple beans and they can still be super delicious using canned tomato sauce. You don't have to make tomato sauce from scratch. So I only used about half of this eight ounce can. So do the math, that's four ounces. So you just wanna cook this until the rawness of the tomato is gone and it's able to combine with a little bit of sofrito and it can combine with ham. We're marrying flavors together. Now let's go ahead and start seasoning this tomato base. First thing I'm gonna do is add some cumin. You know how much I love ground cumin. Immediately, it just puts so much flavor into this. So good. Next, I'm gonna add half a packet of sazon. This is sazon with achote, as you guys know. That's gonna give our beans more flavor along with a beautiful red, reddish orangey deep color okay so we've seasoned our base so that means we got to get started on the star ingredient which are one can of red beans aka arichuelas 
and we're just going to stir them in with the tomato base that we created. And next we're going to add some chicken broth or just plain water, whichever you like. And lastly, to our beans, I'm going to add that one chopped potato. All right, so I'm gonna add a tad bit more water just so our potatoes and our beans are slightly covered. And we're gonna leave these on medium to medium high heat until they just start marrying all those flavors together and they start creating a stew. And once they actually come to a boil, we're gonna reduce the heat. So now that our beans are coming to a slight boil, I'm gonna check our flavors, check our salt levels, make sure they're exactly where they should be. Mm. Okay, so based on what I just tasted, we do need a little more salt. So at this point, go ahead and season to taste with some salt, some pepper, maybe even some adobo. You know I love my adobo. I'm going to add just a tiny sprinkle. Stir this up. We really want to make sure that the flavors are top notch because they're going to absorb inside of the potato. So that means your potatoes are gonna be seasoned in that same stew that your beans are gonna be seasoned in. So our beans are finally coming to a boil. You can probably hear them in the background. They're rumbling. Hear that? Okay. So now that they've got to a boil, I'm just going to lower the heat and allow them to simmer until the potatoes are nice and tender and those flavors are just like perfect. Give it one last stir and lower that heat. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Our beans are finally thickened up in that stew. Our potato is perfectly tender. So I'm just gonna quickly serve myself a bowl and get to taste testing. So here I have our habichuelas and I'm so excited to try these. I just quickly garnish them with a little bit of cilantro just to heighten everything. And I'm gonna go in for my first bite. Mm. I just got some of that ham and it is so good because we were able to put it in in the beginning that ham kind of like rendered out some of its fat and left it really crispy but then it also complemented the tenderness of the potato these are not your average red beans I told you guys Puerto Ricans like everything elevated and this is that it's elevated beans. These are delicious. They do not miss the mark. Like I said, if you guys haven't tried habichuelas, then you definitely need to try this recipe. I will be linking this recipe to my Nata Knows Boricua playlist. As you guys may know, this is a playlist that I've curated for you guys that has every popular Puerto Rican dish from arroz con pollo to arroz con gandules to um, coquito, anything that you can think of that is like a popular Puerto Rican dish, you're more than likely gonna find it in my playlist. So go ahead and watch that playlist from beginning to end. If you guys enjoyed this recipe, go ahead and give me a like, a comment, a share. Go ahead and subscribe. Stay tuned for next week for another delicious recipe. And as always, mi gente, thank you so much for watching. Nata knows best.